guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we will be doing the fourth and final part in our IBD series and we will be talking about Crohn's disease versus ulcerative colitis, so mainly the differences between the two diseases. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the location of the disease. In Crohn's disease, inflammation can appear anywhere in the digestive tract from the mouth to the anus, however, the ileum is most commonly affected. So Crohn's disease, again, can affect any part of the GI tract from the mouth all the way down to the anus. And we said the ileum, which is that terminal portion of the small bowel, is most commonly affected. In ulcerative colitis, this disease involves only the colon and most commonly occurs in the rectum and sigmoid region. So in ulcerative colitis, we only have the large colon that's affected. And the most commonly affected areas are the sigmoid colon and the rectum, which is this area around here. The affected layers. In Crohn's disease, this disease affects deeper layers of the bowel walls and not just the inner lining and therefore it is called a transmural process. So as you can see when the disease affects the GI tract, it affects all through that bowel wall. So in here we have the mucosa, the submucosa, the muscular layer and the serous layer and it affects all the way through and this can actually puncture so it can actually break through the serous layer. That seems to be the only thing probably keeping it apart in this picture. But in ulcerative colitis, this disease affects only the inner lining of the colon and that means the mucosa, which is this first bit, and sometimes in very serious disease, we can have the submucosa being affected. But as you can see, the disease is usually just confined to the mucosa layer of the colon. Now let's talk about the pattern and progression. In Crohn's disease, the disease has healthy areas in between inflamed spots, and this is called skip lesions. So if you look at my diagram at the bottom, you can see this affected area and then you can see normal bits and then you can see another affected area and then it skips a bit and then you can see another affected area. And this is called the classical skip lesions in Crohn's disease. For ulcerative colitis, the affected areas are usually not interrupted and it is usually proximally contiguous. And that basically means that when it affects an area, it continuously affects that whole segment. It doesn't skip any regions and affect another segment but it just affects one piece solely. The inflammatory patterns. In Crohn's disease, we have the classical cobblestoning appearance, which is usually visible on capsule endoscopy. And then we have the appearance of pseudopolyps in ulcerative colitis. And this is basically just the mucosa trying to heal itself and it's unable to get back to its original state and therefore it produces this pseudopolyp appearance. So now let's talk about the peak age of onset. In Crohn's disease, the disease usually peaks between the ages of 15 and 40 years of age. And in ulcerative colitis, there's two peaks. The first peak appears between ages 15 and 25, and the second peak appears between ages 55 and 65. The number of stools per day. In Crohn's disease, there's usually five to six loose, non-bloody stools. And in ulcerative colitis, we can have 10 to 20 liquidy and bloody stools. Perianal disease. In Crohn's disease, this is common, while in ulcerative colitis, it's very rare. The blood antibodies. So in Crohn's disease, we have this ASCA or the Anti-Saccharomyces cerevisiae antibody. And most often, people with Crohn's disease have this ASCA antibodies positive in their blood or present in their blood. And in ulcerative colitis, we can have the P-ANCA or the perinuclear antineutrophil antibodies. And most often people with ulcerative colitis have the P-ANCA antibody in their blood. Barium x-ray findings. In Crohn's disease, we have the string sign which is present. And in the example below, we see a string sign in the terminal ileum of a patient with Crohn's disease. A string sign represents a severe narrowing of the loop the bowel in which a thin strip of contrast within the lumen looks like a string. So as you can see this is actually bowel so it should be the normal thickness like this but you can see that because nothing has been able to pass through here because of that severe narrowing from that inflammatory process we have that string sign which means that intestinal lumen has narrowed to such a point that it looks sort of like a string. In ulcerative colitis we have the lead pipe appearance and in the example below you can see a complete loss of prostration markings in the disease section of the colon and the organ appears smooth-walled and cylindrical. 
The complications of these diseases. In Crohn's disease, our patients will suffer from fistulas, fissures, strictures, abscesses, and obstructions. As you can see in this little image, we have the normal bowel, then we can see what it looks like when the bowel gets inflamed in Crohn's disease. And then when that stricture develops, which is a complete narrowing, and this little hollow tube, where usually food passes through, um, becomes sort of blocked, and we can have an intestinal obstruction here. Or we can also have a fistula, which means that there's a communication because there was a break here in this bowel wall, so it communicates with a nearby organ or even bowel that is close by. In ulcerative colitis, we can have toxic megacolon, a hemorrhage, and we can also have the development of primary sclerosing cholangitis. And below I just put a picture of what the toxic megacolon looks like. As you can see, um, the patient is unable to pass the stool, and there's a collection of stool within this colonic tube, and it's going to increase in size, uh, the patient's abdomen will be distended, and eventually this can actually rupture and cause peritonitis, which is a life-threatening emergency. So as you can see, both these diseases can be highly debilitating. Surgery. In Crohn's disease, surgery is only useful in treating the complications of the disease. In ulcerative colitis, surgery can be used to cure the disease. The risk of colon cancer. In Crohn's disease, there is a moderately increased risk, while in ulcerative colitis, there is a very high risk. And that brings us to the end of this short presentation on Crohn's first ulcerative colitis. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this video and it taught you a bit about Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. And if you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.